Okay, um, so before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we're all gathered today. Uh, from where I'm situated, this is Gadigal and Wongol uh, country. Um, they're part of the Eora Nation, and I pay my respects to their elders past, present, and emerging. Uh, so I work as part of the Google News Initiative. Um, GNI is uh, basically Google's effort to build a stronger future for journalism. Um, absolutely thrilled to see a couple of people that aren't journalists on this call as well. That's absolutely fine. Um, I think the um, the general themes that we'll discuss and the general tools that we'll discuss really apply to anyone, whether you're audience focused or client focused or customer focused, it's all pretty much the same stuff. So my role focuses on the first of the three E's, uh, which is to elevate and strengthen quality journalism. Um, the other areas of focus for the GNI are evolving business models through programs such as Subscribe with Google, which is kind of part of Dave's department uh, for those that were here earlier, uh, and also empowering news organizations through uh, technological innovation. Uh, this is mainly achieved through the development of tools for journalists, but there are new things coming, as Dave mentioned, all the time. Um, and there's a couple of new tools that launched um, within the last six months if my COVID timing is back on track, um, then I'm gonna take you through today as well. So in order to help journalists uh, stay up to date with the latest tools uh, for tining, finding and telling stories, uh, we've also developed this uh, training website, uh, which is absolutely amazing, I must say. Um, I took a year off, um, what, two years ago now to set up a farm in country New South Wales. And when I was coming back, into the newsroom, I hit g.co slash news training and caught up on verification, trends, uh, Google Earth, all of the different things that have happened while I was tending to my cattle. So uh, it's an amazing resource, always up to date, won multiple awards, uh, it's definitely worth checking out. It's basically training on demand. Um, as I mentioned, we also have a teaching fellow who specializes in this, um, uh, Miguel de Souza, who's on the call right now, um, Miguel, wave in your tiny little window. Um, Miguel is uh, a former AAP editorial trainer uh, and he's um, able to offer uh, training on those uh, editorial tools as well at your request. Um, so anyone that wants to get in touch with Miguel, just let me know. Um, and Or Miguel, maybe drop your, your email. Yeah, I just popped my um, email address in there for anybody that wants to get in touch. Um, and, you know, um, I can, as Neil said, um, can cover any or all of the curriculum. Been doing lots of training um, online in sort of modules for people. Um, so yeah, thanks, Neil. So welcome. Uh, my role at, U at Google, Google, Google is not a search engine or a company. Um, Google is. So my role at Google is uh, is quite unique. Um, like Miguel, it's a twelve month fellowship um, with a clear goal. Uh, my role is to help local, regional, and small publishers build stronger businesses, um, primarily through training and support. Uh, I got my first experience in journalism at my local newspaper, the Lithgow Mercury, when I was 15. Um, and the first two years of my career were spent serving local communities as a reporter. Uh, I'm absolutely thrilled to be, uh, to be helping local news at this particular point in time. Most recently, I led News Corp's uh, Shift to Digital by building a national training program for newsrooms. Uh, we trained a thousand journalists in social media, search and mobile video. Um, I also taught journalists and editors how to maximize readership and revenue, uh, which is something that I continue to do in this existing role. Well, I also launched a uh, social news startup Storyful in Australia. Uh, it was a first of its kind service providing publishers and brands with social media content to use in their storytelling. I was previously also uh, head of social media at the ABC uh, and I led the business through a period of fairly dramatic change. Uh, and I'm currently a sessional lecturer at UTS uh, teaching uh, digital journalism. As I mentioned, I also have a cattle farm in country New South Wales and I have a 14 month old daughter, Molly, um, but do not get me started on either of those two things or we will not get anything else done. Um, just before we go any further, there is a Q&A feature inside Google Meet. Uh, the chat's probably better, to be honest. 
Uh, Miguel's already started in there. So if you have any questions, uh, please uh, let us know and we'll pick those up at the end of the session. Um, if you're absolutely desperate and want to chime in, feel free to do that too. Uh, you can also access this recording and the slides after the session. And I will send through a short survey at the end uh, just to basically let you rate us and see how we went. Um, that feedback really helps us improve and also allows us to continue to make the case for this kind of work at, uh, inside Google. So one of the fundamental differences between print and digital publishing uh, is, the, is the deeper understanding of who your audience is in digital and how they behave. So I guess, you know, imagine you could stand over the shoulder of your readers as they flip through the publication, uh, watching how much time they spend on every page, every story, every picture, every ad. Um, analytics allows you to do that on the web. Uh, I'm also now going to show you how to do this uh, so that as you walk out of this session, you'll have all of those skills in your toolkit. What this means for you as journalists, publishers, product and salespeople is that it allows you to use this data to create more engaging stories, build better digital products and tell more compelling stories to advertisers to make them spend more money. Um, that's a really key thing too. Uh, that's the goal here is to build a better business through data and this starts and ends with the audience. This is not the Fonz from Happy Days, looks a little like him. This is Justin. Uh, he's our Director of Education at Google. Uh, when I was first starting out uh, with Storeful, we had very like one clear goal, uh, which was in, to increase the number of journalists using our newswire. I thought that if I could increase the number of users, I'd deepen engagement with our business and success and revenue would flow from there. And fortunately for me, um, it did. Uh, we doubled the amount of Australian users in the first 90 days, which started a process that led to us posting $1 million in revenue in our first year. Uh, Justin, who is our Director of Education at Google and a certified data nerd, uh, looks at analytics like this. The only goal of web analytics is to increase our business outcomes. So before we go any further, uh, I want you guys to all write down uh, one goal or one target for the next 12 months. Um, don't necessarily think about it from your patch. Look at the business as a whole. It's one goal, it must be measure measurable. Um, go for it right now. Um, and a little story while you guys do that. This morning, um, as I mentioned, we've, we've got uh, a farm, it's also an Airbnb. And we've been looking at the, uh, the cost of, of, um, of our business running on Airbnb which is quite significant. Um, and it's also significant for the people that make the bookings as well. There's quite a high fee for people to book through Airbnb. Uh, so we're looking at moving off that platform and doing it through our own website. Um, but we're not quite sure what sort of impact that's gonna have on our revenue. So this morning I put Google Analytics on our website. Um, it's allowing me to track how many potential customers are coming to our website uh, every single month, uh, every single day and Hopefully at the end of this season, we'll be able to say whether or not we can confidently shift to just operating and doing bookings off our own platform versus Airbnb. So absolutely sort of endless possibilities when you're uh, looking at things like uh, web analytics. All right, enough padding, let's go on. So uh, Justin goes on to say that um, web analytics help us understand our audience and their needs and help us make better online experiences for them. Now, depending on what you wrote down, that might mean that you want to drive more subscriptions and analytics will allow you to focus on what make, you know, those kinds of content and experiences that make people subscribe. Um, this is increasingly where publishers are going and there's a lot of uh, research out there to, to uh, support and increase the willingness for people to pay as well. Um, I'll send through a couple of reports after this call as well that, uh, uh, you know, again, within the last six months uh, that talk to an increased willingness to pay, um, which is wonderful news. Um, now, getting people to subscribe is uh, not so easy. Um, 
you know, it's more than just getting people to click. Getting someone to click is is simple enough. Um, it's about getting them to hand over their money, and that's a whole different ball game. Um, so we need to be incredibly tuned to where they see value in what you do. So now let's get into the tools. Um, in simple words, uh, Google Analytics is a free tracking tool by Google that allows, uh, that shows you how visitors use your website. Um, so let's just say you own an e-commerce store um, and you wanna know how many um, users visit your website. Uh, with Google Analytics, you can see the number of visitors to your online store, where they're coming from, which device they're using, and much more. So this is a typical view of the analytics dashboard. Um, Google Analytics is free. Um, this is already starting to feel a little bit like an ad for Google Analytics, um, but um, you can use any analytics uh, tool. They're pretty much the same. Um, you know, they offer Similar, um, similar kinds of data, so all of this stuff will absolutely apply. Um, but Google Analytics is just the one that I'm very familiar with, and obviously Google is currently paying my mortgage, so I, I'm not bound to talk about it, but I certainly will. It's an amazing tool. Um, so with Google Analytics, uh, you can see your total sessions, uh, how many pages per session, uh, how many of these are new sessions, um, average session duration, and also the total number of users and page views. That's a lot of data. You can also see how many of these are new users versus returning users. Um, new users are really important, um, but I know from my time at News Corp, and I think Dave would back me up on this, that returning visitors are your most valuable. But returning visitors for us at News stayed longer on average and we're more likely to engage with other products and services. Um, so that's really, really important. It does build, uh, that loyalty does allow you to then talk to them about a bunch of other things that you might be doing. I'm also gonna talk a little bit now about the much demonized bounce rate, which, um, which is, is worth clarifying. Um, it's the percentage of single session visits. That's all bounce rate is. Um, this could flag a few things for you. Um, it might mean that they were able to find what they needed right away, excuse me, which is a good thing. Um, so you need to be careful about how you interpret that figure. I'll also um, provide a summary of all of these terms as well. So don't freak out if you're already starting to get confused about new users versus returning users versus casual visits versus whatever. Um, I will send through a glossary of terms after this so that you uh, you don't have to worry about remembering all this stuff if, if it's new information. So Google Analytics can also tell you more, uh, more specific things about your users. Um, this guy with the double beard is Peter. Um, you won't know his name, uh, but you can tell what device he used to access your website. You can also see what Peter clicked on uh, to come to your website. For example, Peter came from Facebook. Um, as I mentioned, analytics won't give you personally identifiable information. You can't um, learn specifically who is coming to your site, but you can get aggregated and anonymous information like uh, demographics, uh, age, location, that sort of stuff. So one example of how we use this at my role at the ABC uh, was in prioritizing the rollout of mobile optimized pages. So we saw that around 30% of visits to the news pages were coming from mobile devices, uh, despite the fact that the experience was horrific. Um, so we used uh, this data to roll out changes to the ABC news websites first, as more people were there. Uh, and then we served that very patient and persistent audience. It also really allowed us to simplify our work schedule. So we served the, the bulk of the audience first, which was on news, and then we went backwards from there. And it had a dramatic increase uh, in traffic from that change as well, which was awesome to see. But mainly it helped us work out which websites we were going to do first. 
GA also gives you real-time information on when users are visiting your website. Um, you can look at things like the day, uh, the sorry, the time of day that they're visiting, uh, days of the week, and also seasonality like Anzac Day, public holidays, and Christmas Day. So you could also use data on Christmas Day, for example, uh, to decide what rostering is required. Um, if you have little to no traffic at 2 p.m., uh, you might roster your web editor to go home so that they can enjoy a late lunch with their family. Um, this is probably one of my favorite parts of the tool, uh, as you can understand when your audience is consuming your content across the day. Um, this is the kind of data that you can use to make changes to when staff start the day, uh, when you roll over various parts of the website, and maybe when or how you promote stories. Um, for example, if the audience rushes to your website first thing in the morning, a midnight rollover of yesterday's news is not going to cut it. Um, you might start a senior journalist um, on the first shift of the day with the web team, say at 5 a.m., uh, so that it's fresh and up to date for 6 a.m. Uh, this also gives your print product a kick as you're on top of the news when the rest of the team logs on for the day. Um, Dave, I'm not quite sure whether you were, you were part of this decision at news, but we, uh, we did do this down in Adelaide where we had a senior journalist start at 5 a.m. with the web team. He wasn't thrilled about it, um, but it did, um, it did increase, uh, increase traffic early in the morning, which was uh, amazing. But they did notice that it did give them a real lift in terms of their print coverage as well, because they were quite literally five hours ahead of where they previously would have been in their day. Um, also with GA, uh, you can find out where they're coming from. Um, so recently we did a little, um, a couple of sessions with the Narendra Argus, uh, which is a, a small uh, local news publication. And uh, we found out that they had a number of readers in Colombia. Now I'm not making any aspersions about what's happening down in Narendra, but um, that's the kind of information that you can learn. Uh, so if, for instance, you had a lot of, uh, Tasmania has a lot of expats, there are more, it's kind of like Greece, there are more Tasmanians living outside of Tasmania than there are in, in Tassie. Um, so if you're seeing that lots of expat Tas Tasmanians are visiting your, your website and you're a Tassie publication, uh, you might look at uh, developing maybe a newsletter that targets them or updates during their time zone, uh, a variety of different things that you can do based on that geographic information. We also spoke to a, uh, a local news publication again recently who uh, had, was sitting in an area where another publication had, had um, pulled out. So they were sitting adjacent to a, um, an area which was no longer served and they were looking to see whether or not they might expand their coverage to include uh, the towns in that geographic area. By looking at GA, they were able to see that they were already serving some of those areas. There were people from those areas already visiting their website, and it gave them a, a fair bit of confidence to then move into an expanded uh, publication, which was then serving a larger geographic base. Um, so there you go. So I am conscious that this is um, probably already information overload. Um, so just a reminder that I do have uh, all of these slides, everything that I've said so far, um, and also this entire deck to go home, um, and also that glossary of terms, which I mentioned as well. So this is the final thing that I'll tell you about numbers. I know journalists sometimes don't love numbers. Um, so, um, so we will kind of leave the numbers here uh, after this slide. Um, GA basically allows you to answer, I guess, these kinds of questions. Uh, what do they click on? Uh, where do they come from? Uh, what are they doing when they arrive? So what are the sorts of things that they're doing? Clicking on an ad, uh, clicking play on a video player, um, which articles they go to, how long are they staying, which is really important as well. And also, a lot of the times, you can discover where they go next. As I mentioned, this really helps you to figure out what they are doing on your site. 
Miguel, I'm really proud that I've got to slide, what are we, slide 16 without an animated GIF. Um, so, well, you've, you've um, yeah, I know the habits, uh, the treatment's working really well. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Exposure. Um, Mate, are there any, um, any questions out there? Yes, there are. There's, uh, I'll, I'll just go back to, uh, oh, look, Karen, feel free to unmute if you want to read your own question, if you like. Um, are you still with us? Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to find where I wrote it. Anyway, it was something to do with the fact of being a contribution model versus a membership model. Yep. Um, because we were a free magazine, and uh, as of last month, I stopped publishing uh, the print, and we went to all digital. But I can't decide whether a contribution model is going to be better or a membership model. And, and I so think I, you asked the question, how will analytics help me do this? Right. God, that's a good question. I, if Dave uh, Van Pella is in, in the call, Bill, I think I'm going to throw, throw the conch to Dave on that one. Dave, are you there still? No? Mm. No, there you go. No, he's gone. Um, well, that means that I have to answer that question. Um, I, I don't. I look, I don't have a. I, to be honest, I don't have a, a direct answer for that. I think. Um, yeah, I mean, just looking at it, at some of the stuff that we would look at um, at news, we look at things like the amount of time that they spent on the site. As, as an indicator of whether they're likely to subscribe. Um, so people are coming back more times per month, they're more likely to subscribe to us, but that doesn't really help you with contributions versus membership model. Um, is, is there anyone on the call that, that has a contributions model or a membership model in place that, that could answer that question or maybe add a bit to what I've said? All right. No, um, I might I might dig into that. You and I are on email, Karen. Anyway, and I do owe you an email, so um, let me dig into that and see if there is something like an answer for that in in the product team. Um, my, yeah, I'm I'm not quite sure is the, is the okay. answer. I will get back to you. Okay. Yeah. Now there's um, there's also a question from Taylor uh, Sincock. Hello, Taylor. Uh, I've used Google Analytics in the past. It was both a free version and a more comprehensive paid version about three years ago. Is that still the case? Or is it... Uh, oh, David's back in the call, by the way. So I don't know if we want to just... Uh, David, if, 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 you're, uh, if you're able to... Do, I don't know if you want to just have a quick look at that uh, text of that question from Karen I sent you. Um, sure thing, yeah. Sorry to put you on the spot like that. This is the question, that's right, about the contribution on membership models? Yes, that's right. Yeah, look, it's sort of uh, it's the old question, isn't it? Um, from from my experience working, uh, obviously at News Corp with with Neil, which which had uh, variations of metered uh, paywalls and hard paywalls in some cases. The, the Australian being an example of a hard hard paywall, um, and also more recently working with publishers like the Guardian that, that have a contribution model and and stuff in New Zealand that also have a contribution model. Um, there's many factors that go into it. Obviously, there's the volume of content that you're producing. There's uh, how much of the content that you're producing you'd like to lock. There's the type of content that you're writing as well. Is, is it a, a lot of it content that um, has information that's available elsewhere or is the content that you're locking exclusive to you, so to speak? That's always, gonna, always going to impact how likely someone is to make a contribution or to get out the credit card. Um, I think the reality for most publishers is you won't know until you try. And the beauty of something like analytics is you can you can run some tests where you um, where you can test the waters and say, do you know what? Why don't we lock this one uh, category of our site and throw up a, a hard paywall? And on this other category of our site, let's throw up a, a membership uh, prompt. And you can then choose with analytics to show those prompts for all users or for a percentage of users. And then hopefully, if you have a sound control running at the same time, you'll get some real actionable data um, from your actual readers. Um, to try and figure out where the appetite is for different types of, uh, of, of uh, reader revenue uh, and then basically uh, expand and scale from there is probably going to be uh, my recommendation. 
Okay, thank you, David. I do feel like th th there is a, a leniency towards uh, a contribution model. We we like stuff stuff in New Zealand is a really good case study. I recommend checking out how they've implemented it. Um, people are happy to pay for good content, um, and the, the challenge is how do you, as, as Neil mentioned before, how do you move away from a situation where the majority of your users you know are anonymous users or are sort of transitory users? How do you how do you build that engagement and brand affinity? Uh, the stopgap sometimes or the sort of stepping stone is just to get them to register or get them to follow a newsletter. Just get them to uh, give you that email address so you can start to understand a bit more about that user, uh, what they like, what they dislike, uh, start serving them some more personalized content and sort of take them on that journey and, and recognize that people are likely not going to get out the credit card or make a donation the first time they visit your site. Um, they have to get a bit more familiar with the brand, understand your value proposition, get to know the journalists, right? Get to know the brand. And then as they build up some loyalty, they're more likely to become supporters. This is a big shift for us because we are traditionally um, uh, based on advertising. We have not ever been a reader revenue model. And the advertising really dried up um, with print. And so we thought, okay, we're going to have to figure something out. And that's why we went to that strategy. So it's brand new territory for us. Dave, um, do you think that there's a benefit in looking at a metered paywall as well? Is, is, that, is that something that you would recommend at this point, like a three or four article a month till you hit a paywall kind of model? Well, I think... Um it, it, it depends on your publisher. Obviously, it depends on the nature of your content, and it depends on the market that you're covering as well. Um, Karen, you're, you're from the Northwest Horse Source, is that right? That's yeah. what your, your email there says. So if, if, if you have some exclusive uh, sort of editorial capabilities within that area, and, and perhaps you're, um, you know, you're the, the, the go-to local source uh, for journalism, then, then you're more likely uh, to get subscribers than if you were you know, the fifth um, local publisher for you know for bondi or something like that where there's a saturation of, of news content um in terms of a metered model uh, it, it's it's something else that you could try um the logic be, being there that the frequent users uh, are coming back to the site multiple times a day a week so they're more likely to consume more than three or five or seven articles uh and so they are in theory if that content wasn't available elsewhere they're more likely to become become supporters but again this is um, these are all assumptions, and you won't really know until you uh, run some tests yourself. Yeah, okay, great. Thank you. And we can, um, thanks, Dave um, and Miguel. Um, we, yeah, we can also look at some data for you. So if you've got GA rolling and you want us to have a little look and see what's going on, um, you know, we can, we can also provide some advice a little bit later down the track. Um, Simon Holloway, I think my, my friend from Veggie Pods, um, the, Australia's greatest gardening invention. Um, we're running these at our farm. They're wicking beds, they're amazing. Um, so Simon has asked, um, how much skewed data do you think there is in regards to time on screen slash articles? Um, I know that personally I'm, for example, often distracted and looking at 10 things at once um, and I shall stay on a page for long periods. Uh, has any study been done on that? Um, so the question there is basically about how, how reliable is, um, is time spent on site? Um, I know with us at the ABC, we used to do um, eye track testing and stuff in small groups to, to help us with that. So we'd invite an audience panel in and we'd get them to review a website design and we'd track their eye movements to see um, where they were going and, and uh, it was a lot more reliable than what they would tell us. Um, so there are agencies that can do that. Um, I'm going to bring Dave in. So helpful to have Dave Van Collar on the call. Dave, is there a is there like a timeout uh, within Google Analytics where it stops a session if you're inactive for a period? Like, how does that work? Yeah, I, I believe it is. I think after a while, it assumes that the, the, the you know the user is AFK or sort of walked away or shut the computer down or whatever it might be. Um, what some publishers do, which which I don't necessarily agree with from a user experience perspective, is that they'll automatically refresh the page, uh, you know, after uh, a session has gone inactive for you know uh, sixty seconds or one hundred twenty seconds or something like that. I think that's mostly a little bit of an ad serving hack. I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing that because that's just going to artificially inflate your your page views, right? Um, 
what I'll do is uh, I'll, I'll take that question on notice and what I'll do is see if we can figure out Thanks, Miguel. I'll see if I can find out if that's actually been published anywhere in the literature for, you know, what that rule is within analytics, whether there is an official time um, that, you know, we stop monitoring that user, essentially. But it, it is a very good question. Um, I'm not aware of any studies specifically, Simon, uh, but that is something that I'd also be very interested uh, in hearing about. Um, what my gut feel is, is that number is declining because of uh, the increase in mobile usage, right? So people are less likely to have a thousand tabs open if they're on their smartphone. They're usually uh, in and out quickly of sites. And so I imagine that the sort of uh, the stale reader, if you will, is, is probably less likely. Um, yeah, than it makes sense. Thanks very much. Thanks, mate. Thank you, mate. Um, Dave's going to uh, regret jumping on this call. Um, <laughs> I will take one more question uh, just before we, we keep rolling and hopefully we'll get the chance to, uh, to answer a few more at the end. Um, AFK away from the keyboard. I love that, Miguel. Thanks for that. Um, I um, was just going to say Taylor Sincock uh, had a question. Uh, there was both a free version and a more comprehensive paid version yeah. of analytics about three years ago. Is this still the case? Uh, or is it free across the board for journalists these days? <laughs> Getting some tough ones today. There are, there are, there are both. It's this uh, 360, which is the paid version, which is for enterprise, and there is the Google Analytics free version. Um, both of those are still individual products. Uh, I don't know whether there's any free stuff for journalists or media organisations. Um, Dave Van Collar. I'm not aware of anything, um, but but the good news is that 95% like of the features within the free version are there in, in Google Analytics Premium or Google 360. It's really the difference is in that massive sort of enterprise level um, ad serving capabilities and um, super granular um, sort of insights data. But, but, but really, I've had experience working on both. And for journalists who are looking at building engagement, building uh, content strategy, um, all of the tools and features that you need are available within uh, within the vanilla version. Thank you, sir. Um, there was, um, there also was a question about how do you get access to, to Google Analytics. Um, so it's really, really simple. It's analytics.google.com. Um, and it's, there's a little bit of piece of, there's a, basically a piece of code there that you can just drop into your website. It is, it could not be simpler. Um, and if you do have issues with it, um, please send me an email of which I will forward to Dave because that's how lazy I am. No, I will, I will, I will help you with it or Dave will help you with it. With, but, with it. but yeah, Google uh, analytics.google.com uh, is, is the way to get it. Okay, let's, um, let's keep rocking and rolling. Um, thank you for all those amazing um, questions. Um, so back to our friend Peter with the double beard, no idea why Peter has a double beard, but um, this is just the illustration that I got. Um, so um, in tech jargon, I guess we would say things like this. Um, this is Peter. Uh, this organization has really succeeded in targeting me in as an archetypal visitor to the website. It's absolutely no sense. Uh, translated, uh, this is what it means. These people understand me. So that, that is all we are trying to do basically in a nutshell with analytics is to try and better understand the audience so that we can serve them better. Um, serve more of the content they like, we can um, get them through processes faster, uh, all of that sort of stuff is, is just really based around understanding them so that we can serve them better. It's also important to understand the difference between data and insights. Um, it, it seems like a really obvious one, but it's something that I struggled with, I think, early on when uh, when I first started getting involved with roles where data was really important. Um, the way that I like to think about it is, uh, you know, what uh, data is basically the, the, the useful bit of new information and the insight is how you can act on it. I stumbled there, so I'm going to say it again. Um, Data is the useful bit of new information, and the insight is how you can act on it. So data is information, and insight is how you can act on it. So that is it in a nutshell. Um, I'm going to take you through some of those next generation tools I, I mentioned at the start. These were recently launched and are really 
amazing tools. They work super, um, you know, super easily and well with Google Analytics. Um, you do have to have Google Analytics running to be able to use these uh, tools. Um, so Google has created uh, these free news industry tools to help um, basically make better data-driven decisions um, and also editorial decisions. So uh, both of those areas are covered. Uh, they have really uh, chunky and clunky names. Um, one is News Consumer Insights and the other is Real-Time Content Insights. Um, they have been, I guess, quiet heroes in newsrooms for a little while now, um, but they have been recently re-released uh, with a new resource, which is called the News Tagging Guide. Um, Consumer Insights gives publishers recommendations on how to grow reader revenue and engagement. And Content Insights helps you understand how your content is performing in real time, and also what topics are trending on the web so that you don't miss a scoop. Um, Consumer Insights also has a feature that allows you to turn uh, this data into a dashboard um, that displays on a screen in your newsroom as well, um, which is really, really powerful. So basically you can get all of your content insights and all of the trending stuff that you might be missing in a dashboard. That's a beautiful visualization that you can put on any of the screens uh, in your office. Uh, just puts all that stuff front and center so that you don't have to look at a, at a computer tab uh, to, to know what's happening. The news tagging tool is really cool as well. It's the new addition to the family. Um, it's basically a diagnostic tool that allows you to identify um, audience metrics that you need to capture. So even more simply than that, uh, it, it basically uh, tells you the data that you're missing and what you need to do in order to capture that data so that you can start to uh, get those insights rolling. So here's a link on the screen now to, to look at those tools and also get access to those tools. Um, goo.gle slash data tools uh, is the link. Uh, I'm gonna send this out, as I mentioned at the end, so you can all get uh, get in there and have a, have a play with it. Um, it is free, all of this stuff is free. Um, anything I mentioned uh, today is free. I wanted to give you a really quick view under the hood um, so that you could see uh, basically what you will get. Um, so I definitely recommend that you play around with them all as they're designed, I guess, to work together. Um, however, I did want to quickly show you what uh, Consumer Insight looks like because honestly, absolutely blew my mind. Um, so one of the really cool things about Consumer Insights is that it has a um, built-in decision engine that focuses on how to grow reader engagement and reader revenue as well as showing you how to capture that data better, as I mentioned. Um, so what this basically means is that it's created with the goal of increasing your relationship with your readers and just making you money. Um, it's as simple as that. Um, as you can see on the screen there, it also breaks down your users into segments uh, so that you can also start to do some basic segmentation. Um, it gives you recommendations on things like you know, have you thought about launching a newsletter? Um, uh, videos are doing really well. Um, all of those sorts of stuff that that, uh, that are kind of built into this um, this incredible recommendations engine. All you have to do to get access to this is to log in via your GA account details and it does all the work for you. Um, as I mentioned, you do have to have analytics built into your uh, website uh, to do this. Um, but honestly, it's really, really simple. You shouldn't have any issues with it. And if you do, um, Neil Varko at google.com and I'll be happy to help you uh, through this. Just wanted to recap as well before we have a little bit more time for questions. Um, so this is basically what you've learned over the last um, 45 minutes. Um, audience is our central focus. Success grows from how well we serve them. Uh, analytics help us to understand our audience and their needs. This allows us to serve them better. Data is information. Insights are information that you can act on. And yeah, we're relying on you to use your voice. Um, and, and that really, to me, uh, 
really takes me back uh, to my time at the ABC where um, I would often be in a room once a month with all of the different social media guys from across the business and often these guys are, you know, uh, barely 25 um, and they're the smartest people in the room around social. And for a lot of those guys, it was really about me telling them, you are the smartest person in the room on this and the entire business is looking to you to provide your ideas and your insights and your strategies to help us navigate this really important area. And, and I would, you know, give the same advice to you guys as well. Um, I think it's sometimes it's really hard to raise your voice and, and uh, you know, be that, be that person, but particularly in news businesses, we need someone to take hold of data and be that guy or that girl um, and, uh, and really own it um, because it is absolutely essential to success. This has been my TED talk. Um, guys, thank you. Um, thank you for your time. As I mentioned, we, we do have um, a bit of time for questions and chat now. Um, if you do want to get in touch with me, you can email me at, um, is that your dog, Miguel? Yeah. I'm, I, I can recognize him now. I know. I thought I'd set that filter on to get rid of her, but um, <laughs> it clearly obviously isn't working just that well enough. There you go. Um, so, um, yeah, you can email me, uh, neilvarko at google.com. Um, I'm also at Neil Wrights on social media um, and more than welcome to, to ping me there. Right up at the top, I did mention those uh, on-demand training resources as well. Um, G.co slash news training is how you get access to that sort of stuff. Um, and, uh, and Miguel D'Souza, as I mentioned, is able to do um, uh, sessions like this with your newsroom on things like, um, well, Miguel, you're here. Um, tell, tell the good people what you can do. We, uh, I cover um, search, uh, verification, uh, visualization using Flourish data with uh, pinpoint, which is uh, about the most exciting um, new tool I think um, journalists have been able to have access to uh, over the last few years because of um, it's just massive, massive um, power and being able to sort of uh, crunch huge amounts of data and let you cross reference it really quickly. And um, of course, mapping and earth tools. And uh, we're uh, we're just planning a, a live series of sessions that are coming up soon. And of course, this year we're going to have another verification challenge too. So um, there's lots happening this year. Amazing. Yeah, thank you very much, Neil. And I'll um, I'll throw my um, I'll throw my email address in there again as well because training is completely free. Just like uh, if uh, Neil uh, Larko pays you a visit, um, and um, all of it has been happening uh, obviously because of um, COVID via lockdown, and you can be surprised at how flexible um, and modular it can be, uh, depending upon what your uh, editorial team's needs are. So yeah. Thanks, Neil. You're so welcome. Um, we also have um, Dave uh, Van Collar has just come back, our, our product guru, and he said that um, defaults uh, by default sessions end after thirty minutes of inactivity. So um, that uh, that's basically around that time spent on site. The question that Simon asked earlier on. So by default, chops off after thirty minutes. So if you've got the laptop open and you're watching Netflix after thirty minutes, that session will will end. Any other questions, Miguel? Do you want to pluck some out? Are there any that popped up that I may have missed? That you think um, let's see. It, no, it looks like uh, there was there was a one small one, which was um, how do we get access to analytics? Do we have to be enabled? Which I figured, you know, um, it's uh, a bit. Uh, it, it's probably a kind of foundation question, but I figure um, that is a good practical one. If uh, anybody wants to, you guys want to take care of that. Definitely. So yeah, you can. You don't have to be enabled. Um, I, and David, correct me if I'm wrong. I always get nervous when Dave's on the call because his his knowledge is so much deeper than mine. Um, yeah, me too. By the way, next to. Yeah. Um, so yeah, basically, you just have to have the the GA code, the simple tracking code in your website. Uh, is that right, Dave? More or less, yeah. It's it's just a little bit of code that sits on every page of your site, so um, so the system can monitor users as they sort of navigate uh, between different pages. Um, uh, for most of you that are using a common CMS like a WordPress or a Drupal, 
there's usually a plugin that's pretty much sort of plug and play. Uh, once the plugin is installed, uh, you will enter, um, you will get something called an analytics ID, which is then automatically um, used with the plugin to publish it throughout uh, throughout the whole website. Um, then when you go to uh, analytics.google.com uh, and you're using the same uh, email that you use for all of your other Google platforms, there's still all the data uh, coming through. Um, it won't obviously apply uh, retroactively. So from the day you've installed the analytics code, it'll start collecting the data and start giving you the, the graphs and the data, um, the data dashboards and so forth. Dave, is it at all helpful if I put the uh, link to how to install the, the global tag in the thread, or is that gonna? Yeah, that's helpful. I'll also um, I'll also ping links to the uh, WordPress uh, plugin, and I think there's also a Drupal plugin that I'll share. Those are the common, the two most common um, plugins. Awesome. Is there anyone um, else on the call that's using something other than WordPress or Drupal? I can see if I can find plugins for those platforms as well. If you pop them in the comments, I'll see if I can find um, links for you. Um, did we see Stephanie Wood's question? I don't think we did see Stephanie Wood's question. Oh, okay, just uh, just in there, I've got um, can GA be used with, for example, a Substack or the new Twitter newsletter platform review? Dave Collar, I don't know. I missed that question. Can it be used for what? Sorry. So um, the question was, can GA be used with? Because GA is a website tracking tool at at, at its essence, I guess. Um, so um, the question was, can it be used with um, Substack or um, what was the other one? Yeah, Twitter's newsletter platform review. Okay. And usually, right. usually yes, uh, as long as those other platforms give you the opportunity to add in something like a tracking pixel or a UTM tag or something like that. So usually the, they, they'll allow uh, data sharing between the platforms, provided that the permissions are there for some sort of tracking element or pixel to be included. There you go. Any other questions? I'm loving Substack, by the way. Um, I haven't played around with review, but... Um, oh. Anyone want to pipe up? Uh, That's a great question, Karen. Yeah. So we've had the same domain for 20 plus years that have used a, a wide variety of platforms. Do we still benefit from longevity or is it a fresh start from Google's perspective when we start a new platform? Um, I'd say almost always it's better to keep the domain that you have. Um, the way that Google's ranking algorithm works is one of the things it takes into account is uh, how much and for how long have you written about a particular topic? Because obviously that is a pretty strong signal that you are trustworthy, reputable, and that you have uh, you know high quality authoritative content about a particular topic. Uh, whereas if you were starting fresh, you would have to rebuild that, that trust within the algorithm. Um, I understand sometimes it's unavoidable if you're, you know, rebranding or if you, <laughs> or if you, uh, you know, merging companies together or maybe if one of them has been hacked or something like that, and it's unavoidable in those cases. Um, you can then do something that's called uh, a migration, where you sort of would redirect users from the old domain to the new. That that's kind of the next best thing after keeping the domain that you have. Amazing. Um, and thank you, Karen, for joining us from Washington State. Um, great to have you on the call. Um, any any other questions, guys? Don't be uh, don't be afraid. We've got um, Miguel de Souza here, who's our teaching fellow, who can answer any of your questions around Google tools, like or verification that sort of stuff. Um, we've got uh, David Van Collar, who's our product expert as well. Um, so an amazing amount of expertise in the call. So feel free to hit us with anything that's not related to search results or, or, or the code. I think they're two black words, maybe. Um, but yeah, anything else? We are happy to answer. Everyone's got their Google search results questions. There is an yeah. analytics question. Um, Google, analytics, Google Analytics is sampled, um, unless you get the premium version. 
but the sampling is done at such a rate that uh, it's it's pretty accurate. Uh, we can. Uh, what, what's the old expression that if you've got a sample of more than three, 300 or 3,000, then you've sort of got 99% accuracy for um, you know, the, the entire data set, essentially. So it functions on those uh, same principles. Um, the only instance where it might be beneficial is if you are spending a huge amount on something like Google AdWords, where you do want to get really, really granular data to sort of refine what keywords you're bidding on, uh, which I I suppose it's probably not the case uh, for this group. Um, but yes, there is this, a, a degree of sampling um, that happens with Google Analytics. And it's probably 99% accurate. Thanks, Simon. That's super helpful. Um, any, other, um, any other questions, guys? You can either just tap them into the chat there if um, if you want to and we'll pick them up or feel free to shout out. Or similarly, if you've got a, a story that you want to tell, something that's worked really well for you from analytics, from an analytics perspective or anywhere else, um, love to hear it. All right. Well, it feels like we've kind of tapped out maybe. Um, guys, thank you so much um, for, for making time. I know how hard that is um, at the moment, and um, and we, we, we do appreciate it. Um, hopefully this has been useful to you. Um, if not, please let me know via the feedback form. Um, I'll get that out to you uh, within the next hour or so, um, as well as uh, the full deck, so you can have that as a resource, uh, the glossary as well. And as fast as I can get it to you, I will have a video uh, of this call as well for you to look back on. Um, as I mentioned, Neil Varko at, at google.com is my email. Uh, feel free to hit me up with any questions. Really happy to, to answer them, help you out in any way I can. Um, if I can't answer a question for you, um, which does happen, um, I, will, I will find an answer and bring it back, or I'll connect you with someone else in Google that will be able to answer that question for you. Um, thank you also to Miguel D'Souza for, uh, for being on the call, um, but also for, um, for moderating as well, super helpful. Um, and Dave Van Collar for, for basically leading the entire uh, presentation with his incredible depth of knowledge around our products. So, You're welcome. Uh, Thanks for having me, mate. Not at all. All right, guys, um, that is it from us. So thank you so much for your time. Have a wonderful afternoon and a rest of the week, and hopefully we'll see you again sometime soon.